Well, good morning, everybody. I uh, greatly appreciate everybody uh, taking the time to attend our productivity series here. Uh, the uh, first one that we're going to do here on the Uteam brand is with the uh, Belky Slim system. Uh, we have our product manager on the Tile and Stone side, Dave Hamilton, that is uh, going to be leading the charge for this. And so we greatly appreciate everybody attending. Um, thank you for uh, your your attendance. Hope everybody is doing well. And we're going to get going here just in about uh, two or three minutes as uh, more people start to kind of roll in. Um, say it now and I'll say it again. If there is uh, any questions throughout uh, the presentation, what we would ask you to do is uh, type them into the uh, chat function, which is down below. At the end, we'll uh, go ahead and we'll open up the mics and we'll open up the uh, questions. We'll just kind of start reading the questions off. So if you have any questions, um, you know, just put them in there and we'll, we'll kind of go from there. But again, thank you for your time. Thank you for joining us today. And we'll get going here in just about uh, three or four minutes. Well, good morning, everybody. We greatly appreciate you uh, taking the time to join us here for our uh, productivity series. Uh, we uh, uh, greatly appreciate uh, uh, everybody's uh, patience with all the new technology that we have going on and uh, really excited to bring to you today uh, one system that can definitely enhance the productivity on your job sites or be an additional revenue source. Uh, and that is the Utsim Belki Slim system. And it's really a great system for installing tile um, on outdoor places, outdoor patios, outdoor decks. And uh, we're joined today by uh, Dave Hamilton, who is our product uh, manager for our tile and stone systems on the Utsim side. And Dave comes to us with a wealth of knowledge on, on the tile side of uh, industry, been in the industry for a long time. I'll let him ex uh, give you his background. but. Um, uh, again, we want to thank you for, for joining us. Um, quick formatting, uh, uh, kind of a little bit on the format here. We're going to go ahead and give the presentation. Uh, Dave's going to 
Dave's going to start here in just a minute. Uh, if you do have questions, there's a question bar down in your um, uh, toolbar to the right. If you go ahead and just put your questions in there, we will answer all questions at the end. Uh, we'll kind of read through them, but um, that's just kind of uh, the best way there. Then we'll open up the mics and we can uh, we can ask some questions that way as well. So again, thank you for joining us. And uh, without further ado, Dave, the floor is yours. Okay, thanks, Josh, and thanks, everybody. Thanks for taking time uh, today to uh, for me to go through this with you guys. And uh, this is a bit of a technical discussion as far as webinars go. So I've got lots of photos, lots of information for you guys, lots of the installation, real-world side of things, too. Um, Belka Slim is a very unique installation uh, solution for primarily exterior, but we can also use this interior and we'll get into some of that for tile and stone. Um, it's been in Europe for quite a number of years. I saw that system um, a few years ago when I was when I got into the developmental side of things for us uh, here in North America. And they had a lot of successes with it. And I felt that con considering some of the problems we have in our industry with installing tile and stone exterior and on balcony decks, this was a, a huge solution for us. And and over the time, we launched it uh, four years ago, and over that time, we've done some really nice installations that have gone extremely well. So I want to discuss some of, the, some of the problems with exterior decks. I want to talk about the installation side, then go over some of the features benefits, and then lastly, some of the, ins the, the information we have um, that we can pass on to you guys for, for sales tools and things like that. So. So just a little quick snapshot on the company, just in case uh, you're not aware, what a great company Uzen is. And, and in my former life, I was with another major manufacturer for quite a number of years, and I thought I knew all the global players in the industry. And and when they approached me, I went, who is Uzen? And uh, I did a bit of research, and these guys are a are, are really good horsepower company been in business for over 100 years. It's a very professionally run business, but is a family business. So we get that kind of family touch involved in it, but very focused on systems that can be more efficient and more productive for the installer and for shops to get things done a little bit quicker and with better finished surfaces in a very efficient manner and just totally flooring focused. They don't get into structural elements of a building or bridges, but they do a variety of things on the hardwood side, on the ceramic side, on the coating side, on the maintenance side. So they've got seven different global brands. We carry three of them here in North America and we're gonna continue to grow as the company grows as well. But great company, uh, been in the States uh, for a little over 12, 13 years. And, uh, and really good company to be associated with and connected with. So very solutions minded. So, so getting into the Belka Slim side of things, one of the trends that we've had going on for the last number of years is a lot of outdoor living kind of um, style and, and fashion and tile really flows well into that space because of how durable it is and slip resistant and decorative and it adds to the value of your house. So with that, it's it's a really perfect space for us to, to work installation systems and expand the realm of our business from the inside of a structure to the outside in a, in a bigger way. But trying to also be mindful about the p potentials of problems. So let's kind of walk into that. So I did um, quite a bit of inspection stuff too in my past life, and I did look at quite a number of decks and some great ones and some not so great ones. So here was an example of an installation of uh, a deck that was over a roofing membrane and it had a mortar bed. And this is only five years old and you can see all the grout joints and these grouts, this, these joints have already been regrouted once. And so you see erosion of the grout joints. And if you look to the left-hand side, you see a significant amount of efflorescence and blotchiness coming through from the mortar bed. 
But what's worse is this kind of staining that's happening, cascading over the deck, and that is efflorescence. So what happens is it's a reaction between Portland cement and excessive amounts of water, and then it moves out of the system, gets oxidized by the air, and that's what you get is this mineral deposit that happens on installation. So this is probably one of the biggest problems we have with exterior decks is this prone situation with um, Portland cement reaction to water. Here is another one that was done with an uncoupling membrane. And what they're getting here is latex leaching that's coming out of the thin set mortar that's cascading out over top of it. And this deck actually had uh, quite a bit of a roof cover overhang. So it was just exposed to the driving rains that came in across it. But another example of a potential problem that could happen with these installations. So I'm a fan of uncoupling membranes for certain applications. They've been out for, gosh, probably a couple decades now, and they're really good in terms of their ability to handle traffic loads, or they're rated really high for up to industrial applications even. Um, but what you're doing here with these type of products, and when you, you're installing them, you're double gluing them with an excessive amount of thin set mortar. And so, for interior, that's not a big deal. For exterior, you've now created an environment where it's almost like a sponge because Thinset is porous. And Thinset has all this Portland cement in it, which is really good for a lot of applications and it's a hardener and it's a catalyst. But when you put it in exterior conditions, it's, it's like a sponge and absorbs water. And when you have these low cavities of these plastic channels that hold water, it's a conduit for problems like we just saw here. So another thing we're finding with these um, uncoupling systems like this is that it also affects the grout joints, not just the setting material. So you get water saturation that collects in an uncoupling system. The mortar gets saturated. Well, so does the grout joints. So you can get premature deterioration of the grout joint, efflorescence, bleeding through, softening of the grout joints, things like that. So one solution the industry has kind of been moving in the direction over the last five, seven, 10 years is going to pedestal systems. And pedestal systems are really good. Essentially, you're isolating the tile from the substrate you don't have to worry so much about what the substrate's doing so you've got a built-in crack isolation if you have say conduits or pipes or electrical you can run that underneath very successfully but now you have to go to quite thicker tile you have to go to two two centimeter or three quarter inch porcelain or greater um, pavers which create a lot of weight and you also increase the height so you've got weight and height issues, which can pose problems at doorways. And they claim they're kind of maintenance free. You just let you, the, uh, the water and the maintenance cascade through the grout joints and down below into the roofing membrane. And then if you have to do any kind of maintenance, well, you can remove the tile, which you can. You can use suction cups and re remove it, but you've got to be extremely careful when you do that because these edges of the tiles can crack and chip very very easily so the removal process is not as easy as you think it is but what you end up getting potentially is all kinds of organics that can build up under your installation with this so you got to be mindful of that but otherwise it's a good installation system so moving in the direction of balka slim what the heck is this so it's basically the core components of Balka Slim are um, our 185 sheet good system, which was traditionally um, a, a resilient flooring system for isolating resilient floors um, for high moisture or contaminated surfaces. But we've, we've moved that also as a crossover item into the tile and stone area with this. So, I'll talk a little bit about 185 specifics a little bit further down, but it's an awesome membrane system that's very reinforced and it's got this, these little micro pedestals on the back that suspend the membrane um, from the surface and allows for vapor transmission to pass through. Um, 
Then we have BST-150, which is a double peel and stick um, tape that we use for all the uh, seams and flashing detail. And then we have, instead of a cement-based thin set, we have a two-component urethane that's low odor, sag resistant, very trowelable, very workable as our core installation component for the tile and stone. So I'll walk you through this a little bit here. And what we need is a substrate. It's actually very simple criteria. So we need a substrate that is um, that will handle the load and deflection of a tile assembly. So free, free from deflection or within deflection criteria for the tile and stone that we're using. And that sloped um, 2% and flat and plain. So if we have those three criteria, we're pretty much good to go over a lot of different uh, surfaces and we'll get into that too. But once we have our substrate, then we put down our, our uh, 185 sheet and it's a six foot six roll good. So it just basically rolls out. And then we use our detail seam tape on all the flashings and seams. And then we install with TR400. And then we put our control joints in and then we grout. And that's the system. So pretty straightforward. Um, and I'll walk you through some installation stuff here. So here's an example of a deck that we did about this time last year. And this is Lake Ontario um, in Canada. And what we had here is exposed aggregate concrete. And if you've seen exposed aggregate, it looks brilliant when it's new. But over time, you get weathering, you get little pits in it. It gets hard to walk on. Um, and and you get it's hard to maintain so this was a perfect candidate for belka slim and so the first thing we do on the installation side of things is that we have to do any we got to check our substrate for any kind of deviations in it and make sure it's flat in plain and in this case we had some bird baths and some low spots and so we primed this with our 260 latex primer and then we did fillers with um triple eight patching compound super high performance so we did those corrections and that's what the finished surface was like it was sloped already two percent in grade so we were good there we didn't have to build anything but if you have to here's a different deck that we did and this was um a similar exposed aggregate concrete, but if you look in the bottom left-hand side, this was low about an inch in that bottom. So we put our, our long straight edges on there. It's like, oh, this is way low here. Okay, so we've got to get this trued up. What do we use? So in this case, instead of triple eight, we used our NC182 gel patch, which we can go from feather edge to unlimited thickness build, and it dries quickly and nice and smooth. So we did those corrections there with that particular product. So you have a couple different options of what you can use. But if you had to do a complete re-screed, could you use a sand cement uh, screed? Absolutely, for sure. Sometimes we run into um, decks um, or regions that require a roofing membrane. So if you're in the tile business, you know that you can't really install directly on a roofing membrane because it's too smooth and too soft and creates all kinds of difficulties. So the only way that you can really feasibly go on top of a roofing membrane is you've got to use a sand cement screed. And now you're back to creating issues with height and weight loads to a structure. So this is another area that Belka Slim shines on because we can go directly over it in a, in a thin, slim build type of application. So by code and by testing, Belka Slim is waterproof, but it doesn't meet and we haven't tested it and had it approved as a roofing, single source roofing system. And maybe that'll come in the future. But if you have to go over a roofing membrane, it is doable. So here's an example. Here's 185. This is what a typical sheet looks like, six foot six wide. And it one thing you'll notice with 185, it's so brilliant in the sense that you can roll it out and literally within 15, 20, 30 minutes, uh, it'll lay super flat. 
So you don't have to worry about any peaking or any ridges or memory than stuff that it, where it wants to poke up as you're doing the install. So also really brilliant to cut. And you can use either a straight blade or a hook blade just to pull it. And when you lay it out, it's like any type of resilient floor covering. You, it doesn't matter which direction you're going. Just try to minimize the amount of seams and wastage on your install. So you can run it this way or you can run it in the opposite direction, whatever, whatever you like. Not a big deal. And what you can see here is uh, the next part of this is he's doing all the seams now. And what you do is you cut, you, you lightly butt the seams. And then any of the, around any of the pillars, columns, uh, from the house, um, you leave a gap about an eighth of an inch. And then you put in the seam tape on it. And here's a great shot of BST 150. So this is a six inch um, butyl sealant tape and the stuff sticks like crazy. It's really, really bondable to all kinds of smooth, clean surfaces. So whether it be a metal flashing, an aluminum flashing, um, siding, stuff like that, sticks like crazy to just about everything. It's also a plasticizer migration resistant, which means it gets really good long-term bond to the the uh, 185 sheet system but it'll stick to vir virtually anything that's clean and smooth and if you have anything that's porous or dusty then you can run a particular primer either say our 260 primer or a 414 primer do a great job of that kind of thing but very user friendly and it's got a double peel on it so it's got it's got a um, a twin backing so that you can stick a uh, a horizontal side first or or then a vertical so you can do either or depending on which way you're you're working but very very user friendly and you do have some adjustability with it where if you if you have to peel back really quick you can do that so once you've got all the deck in place and this goes pretty fast by the way it's 185 is probably one of the fastest membranes that is is in the industry to install and uh, once you get this done, then the next part is is doing the installation side of things with the actual tile. And in this case, we're back to our Ontario deck and it was hot in the 90s. And when you're doing these installations, you want to try and keep as much shade on your work area as possible, not only just for the guys, but also to try and maximize your working time with the thin set. Conversely, if you get into situations where you got rain, then you got to protect it. So you got to put up heavy poly or tarps to protect from driving rains because you don't want to saturate water into the surface or within your thin set mortar as you're doing this. So next question is, okay, well, that's great, Dave. Well, how much working time can we expect with this thin set because it's so different than a cement base? And you know what? You have lots of working time with it. Um, but it's also, it varies on the type of conditions and temperatures that you're working in. So with, um, and if this is not an epoxy, so one thing that you don't have to worry about with TR400 is it cooking in the can. Like most epoxies, um, they start a, a reaction and they generate their own heat. And all of a sudden you can feel within 10, 15 minutes, the bottom of the, the can starts heating up. Well, you don't have to worry about that with TR400. So it's a polyurethane as opposed to an epoxy. So you mix in the activator and it blends within a couple minutes. And as soon as you see the, the, the additive and, and the white go from gold to white, then you're good to go, like within a two minute mixing time. And then typically you've got like an hour to an hour and 15 minutes for most conditions, but when it starts getting hot, that's when you're gonna start losing some of your working time. But otherwise a really nice mortar, you don't need two hands on the trowel to spread and you'll feel it as it starts to thicken. You'll, you'll just feel the viscosity thicken. It's not gonna go off on you too quickly. And all the best practices to installing a normal thin set mortar applied to TR400. And I would say that um, although you could do this, this deck at, with one installer, it would be preferred to have two. And I would suggest that you'd get all your, your key layout done in advance. You get all your pre-cuts done um, kind of in advance before you start mixing up mortar. 
And uh, you see this gentleman here on the right, he's doing his proper lock-in trowel. So you wanna make sure that if you've been walking on the surface, you clean it really well with our clean wipes. And then you can do your install and then you trowel in one direction and then you back body your tiles, then you set then you put in any kind of clip systems you want to keep them all in alignment nicely. And then you just do a quick wipe down on tile with our clean wipes. And these work really slick for, for cleanup of tools and tiles. So if you get any smudge marks on it. And if there's anything with TR400 that might be a negative is the fact it's not water washable like an epoxy or like a cement thin set. So that's where those little clean wipes come in handy. But you just clean as you go. And as you're doing that, and once you get the tile done, then um, we've got to put movement joints in. And anybody that's done exterior tile should know that you need movement joints, especially exterior. I mean, so much interior, we don't use them, but we should. On bigger commercial stuff and larger spans are a definite must. But for most residential work, it's not really used, maybe on some radiant heat stuff. But when we start talking exterior, you absolutely have to have movement joints because your tile will move fractions of inches every day with different temperature changes and solar heat hitting the tile. So what that means is you get all kinds of lateral movement and the tile growing and shrinking at different rates and different angles. So it puts pressure on the installation itself and you can get peaking. And especially considering this is a loose lay installation, it's not bonded, it has the tendency to, to want to tent. So having those movement joints to reduce that stress on the bond line and the installation is not just with our system, but with every exterior installation system is a must. There's some industry specification documents that we refer to in this. Um, with EJ171 from the Tile Council of North America. Another consideration you have to think about on these is uh, if you're working with clients is what is a railings? That's a, it's always a good question to ask or if you're doing an inspection, keep this in mind too. And there's two types of railings. And what you see here on the left is called a fascia mount railing. And these are ideal because they just bolt right into the fascia board um, or if it's a concrete structure, um, they'll be they'll be uh, hilted in place. But what's really nice for the tile setters, in fact, you get a nice clean edge and the homeowner too. You get a nice clean edge for maintenance and installation and makes it really easy. But going back to our Ontario deck here, what you see here is a surface mount post and sometimes you, you get what you get and you just have to work around it. So when you're doing those kind of posts then you have to take into consideration, okay, how is our tile gonna terminate into that? What kind of cuts do we have to make around that? Um, is it worth coring holes in the tile, um, removing the railings or do we have to leave the railings in place because of safety hazard potential? So that just has to be a consideration and doing your termination, you know, how is, how are we gonna terminate into that? And we can use the butyl sealant tape to terminate into that and then use, use either polyurethane or a, um, a silicone caulking just to make sure we don't have water intrusion into that. So here's our finished deck, came out awesome. Nice long plank system here and changed it from a um, exposed aggregate that was kind of unsightly to uh, this beautiful installation that's easy to walk on. And you can also, when you're choosing tile too, you have different, um, it's obviously practical, like you see how light a tile this is, you know, it's gonna be easy to walk on and bare feet. If we're starting to choose tile that's a lot darker, charcoal colors, um, dark browns, that kind of thing. Sometimes people have like say a dark brown plank inside and they'll want to use it outside. You can do it, just be mindful that if you're a barefoot uh, uh, person walking around, it's, it's not gonna be as comfortable. And it's gonna also add more to the solar heat gain of your structure too, especially if it's over living space, um, that will increase the, um, your air conditioning cooling costs too. So there's, some of the tile manufacturers have things called solar reflective indexes on their uh, tile that they can let you know how what it is to reflect back on. 
Here's another great one that we did last year in Utah. Um, they used a thicker porcelain paver for this installation. So we get asked, hey, uh, is there different trowels that we can use with TR400? And the, and the answer is absolutely. Typically, we're using a quarter by three eighths for most installation, um, sometimes half inch by half inch if we're getting bigger. Um, but you can go really thin with TR400 just at general as a, as, a, as a specialty installation system, or you can go with thicker, but it's got great sag resistance and great workability for all types of tile and stone. Here's another one we did. As you can see here, this is uh, exposed aggregates, kind of unsightly, hard to maintain. And this is what we turned it into with 18 by 30 porcelain came out awesome. Um, and actually um, slab on grade, like you can just feel like uh, it's, it's a very solid installation to walk on. And what we're doing here with so many of these installations is we're really increasing the value of people's homes. And if you see in the stair, we did this little stair uh, case in the back here in front of the sliding glass door. What we could, we couldn't use Belka Slim for that, but what we did was we wood framed it put cement board on top, then we use TR400, or uh, sorry, um, HS200 cement based waterproofing, and then we set the tile with TR400 on that. So very, very strong installation system because we couldn't put the floating on that, it would just move around too much. Okay, so just some quick recaps here. Um, very simple, substrate must be in a position to accept the weight and deflection of a tile assembly. Um, wood substrates by industry recommendation must be double layer, inch and a quarter thick, and then flat and plain to the tile tolerances that we need, and then um, slope to drain 2%. And typically, pedestrian foot traffic conditions, because this is a floating application, and I would say that could also include some light traffic, like commercial settings, like for example, if you were doing a restaurant balcony, where you had, you know, servers and clients coming into restaurants, that kind of thing. It could be, an, you know, exterior terrace, patio, restaurant types of things. I would say that kind of application would be very, very suitable. But I wouldn't use it in, say, um, you know, a motorcade where you're driving vehicular cars on or you had heavy carts and dollies on. Acceptable substrates. This is where Belka Slim really shines because we can go over so many things that we typically couldn't do with a traditional thin set mortar, especially exterior. We have clients that want to use, they want to go over new concrete that's freshly poured, not a problem. Um, applications over pressure treated plywood, um, coatings, vinyl decking, um, roofing membranes. Sometimes we get into steel. Um, or fiberglass substrates. The main thing with these, as long as they are free from deflection and meet our criteria, you can stick to it and you can put this floating, you can, sorry, not stick to it, you can put this floating system over it. Works really, really good. Uh, contaminated substrates, cracked substrates. And we can use this primarily, it's positioned exterior, but if you had an interior condition that was very favorable, hey, why not? I mean, you can, you can use it. So here's the 185, so six foot six rolls. There's about 538 square feet per roll, and there's no waffle voids to fill. That's easy, just roll it out, trim it, um, and then do your seam detail, but just a fabulous, uh, probably like I said, one of the fastest installation systems you'll find as a membrane to put down in our industry. The P, uh, TR400, uh, because it's not cement based, it's polyurethane based, we don't have to worry about efflorescence or latex leaching out of it. So completely efflorescence free. Um, way more durable, it's flexible, but it's yet semi-rigid. Um, it's got really good uh, temperature change, freeze thaw durability, solar temperature gain, so it, it'll flex and move over time. And when you get your, you know, when you back butter and you get your 95% transfer, there's virtually no water that's getting underneath or behind the installation. So it's virtually an impervious installation. So some companies talk about, oh, how's your drainage system? Well, this really isn't a drainage 
program because nothing's really absorbing other than what you get into the grout joints that eventually cascade their way out. So it's more of a cascading type of drainage system as opposed to being, you know, drainage through the system. And one thing that's cool with TR400, and we get into it so much in spring and fall conditions on these shoulder seasons, is that it cures out way better. Like some of these conditions where we get clients that want to install tile in very borderline temperatures, you know, in spring and fall because of scheduling um, becomes very dangerous with cement-based materials, but also very favorable when we start talking about TR400 because it's a, uh, it's a resin reaction. Um, as well as temperature material. So very, very uh, safe. Okay, so on the money side, um, always get asked, hey, uh, that's great, Dave, but what does this cost? So it's not an inexpensive system, for sure. Um, not for everyone, but certainly one of the, the best systems that's warranted out there. And the guys that I talk to and my clients say, you know what, that's uh, it's not inexpensive, nothing is, but it's not horrible either. So. If we have some clients um, looking at this from Canada, if you take these numbers, this is in US dollars, and you multiply it by about 1.4, that's about where you're going to be in Canadian funds. But essentially, here's 185. This is what you can expect. Let's just say our average deck is maybe a 10 by 25, 250 square feet. So that's what you'd be looking at for each particular component, say 350 bucks there. The TR400 is your big cost in it because it's a resin material that's that's very very expensive, but for good reason. Um, so there's another 800, 900 bucks there, and then your BST 150, depending on your size, your deck, it may might even be less than one roll, but let's just throw one roll in there. Um, the ooze and clean wipes that we have a little unit there, and we're gonna have. Right now we have our cement based grout, um, but soon we'll also have an epoxy based grout. So we'll have a couple different options and yeah, we'll be able to use the epoxy exterior with it. So depending on, on what avenue you wanna go, there's a couple, couple costs there. Some trims, um, the movement joint sealer, uh, optional, you could uh, use a tile and grout sealer like many of the tile manufacturers recommend a, um, a pre-seal. A pre um, just to keep little pits in the porcelain from getting uh, contaminated over time. And so you're looking at material dollars in that six to seven dollars per square foot. On the installation side, I'd say you're probably looking at two guys, two installers for three days, maybe to do 250 square feet, maybe a day of prep and, in, and then a day, day and a half of, of install and then, uh, and then grouting. So uh, on that, you're probably, you know, and then materials, uh, tile, of course, on top of it. So again, not an inexpensive system, but like I said, we're um, really increasing the value of some someone's home. So it gives you another tool in your toolbox to uh, throw up there on a quote for sure. So warranty, we're handling pretty much on a job by job basis. And we have, and what we want to have is a lot of involvement with our using technical sales team because it's a new installation not as you saw it was pretty straightforward but we really want to make sure that we do the right thing because there's been so many problems out there that, and if our guys catch one little idiosyncrasy or something it might make the difference on it and we just you know it's just part of what we do we really want to work with our clients in the field to make sure that everybody has a happy face at the end of the day with their with their customers so um, we try to get involved as much as possible, and we encourage that. And our warranty covers uh, material and labor replacement where required. Um, and we're also trying to encourage um, a full package, single source sale through our distribution as much as possible to try and have our, you know, everything as much um, sourced by our distributors as, as possible on this. And then, okay, what do we have for literature? So we updated, we've got a new brochure that's a little updated that uh, because this has been out for four years, we just decided it was time to just do a little quick update, nothing major on the changes, but nice trifold that we have here that's available through our uh, Uzen sales team. And um, installation document. So I tried to write this as, um, 
simple as possible for everybody and not have it full of legal jargon. So what it shows on the front is just some uses, limitations, um, what the system is. And then on the back side, you have what's a pre-installation checklist. So whether you're an estimator or an installer, you can go through this just to make sure that you've got all your, you know, T's crossed uh, and I's dotted here. And then little important notes of what, what you need to know and allow for and job site environment protection. So that's available as well, but that's an easy read. And then lastly, we put together this on our website just very recently. So all these documents are available there. And we're also gonna upload some more um, job references and success stories on this as we go. And I see also in the future, we'll have a, a video connected here as well at some point just uh, to walk people through. We do have a video on RR185 that's available, but just not part of the Belka Slim system, but it'll give you an idea of how that goes down. So yeah, so thanks so much for uh, your time and attention on it. So hopefully there was some good information here to open your eyes to maybe some new uh, opportunities and revenue stream as Josh uh, mentioned. and you can get all your information if you have any questions if you have site visits um, that kind of thing you can certainly reach out to our sales team and they'd be more than happy to walk you through everything you need to know about the system and all the costs involved in it so at this time we can also if we've got some questions i'd be more than happy to answer anything that's uh, that i might have missed or overlooked or something that might be on somebody's mind yeah, hey Dave, uh, we've got three questions that have come in thus far. Um, one of them, I think uh, I think you kind of went through, it came in a little bit before, but certainly good to uh, maybe review it just a little bit. But uh, the question is, would you recommend having the handrails installed before or after uh, the Belky Slim? And just, if you wouldn't mind just reviewing that uh, quick system or quick process uh, one more time. Oh yeah, uh, great question. Um... And I would say if uh, if it's a, if it's at all possible and it's not a safety issue or you've got to have some other temporary thing, I would recommend to remove remove the railings just from a tile setter's perspective and also from um, you know like a productivity standpoint. Being able to do get everything done first would be ideal. The question is just how far are the handrails from the edge? What type of tile are you installing? Um, and if you were going to put the handrails in over top of the tile, you may have to use some type of gasket system because you know you could you could put the handrails in over top of the tile and then bolt through the tile, but then you got to be very careful, especially with porcelain, not to damage or or crack what you've just installed because that's also becomes a bit of an extraction, becomes really mm -hmm. difficult to do, right? So you'd, you'd have, to, it's, it's a, yeah, it's a tough call depending on the application, but I think I would, if it was my deck, I'd prefer to remove everything, have a nice clean edge. And ideally, if I, if I was in the position to replace my railings, I'd go to a, um, a fascia mount. That, would, that way it's, it's easy peasy. Yeah, yeah, no, it's good, good. Um, just a little clarification. Um, in one of the slides, it looked like there was a gentleman in a red shirt. He was uh, flat trawling the uh, 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 400 onto the 185. Um, Correct. Yep. And what would be the reason for for doing that as opposed to um, a different? You know, as a, what's the reason behind that? I guess. Yeah. No. A really good question. Uh, and there's and there's no dumb questions. Only dumb answers on my part. But the surface of 185 has uh, like a bit of a micro texture to it. Mm, like it's, okay. you know, at first glance, when you see a sample of it, it's like, oh, that's really smooth. It is, but if you, if you look closer, you'll see it's it's got a bit of a micro, micro texture, almost like, you know, kind of like our fingers do, right? With fingerprints, it's kind of like that. It's got a little bit of cavities in it. So it allows for gripping properties for whether you know we're using it on the resilient side and, and installing floor coverings on it or we're using tile and stone so and it's also just it promotes really good properties 
and this part of a, the best practices, you know, whether you're installing tile on plywood or, or concrete, even smooth steel trowel concrete, you know, we don't tend to like that. We want something that's got some gripping properties. But in any case, uh, where I'm going with that, it's it allows your thin set to, to lock into your substrate. So as smooth as 185 is, it still has a bit of a micro texture and this allows some gripping properties into the 185, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, it totally makes sense. So good, thanks for clarifying that. Um, then another question is, uh, will, will it be effervescent free without grout as well? Um, is it better to use the epoxy grout over a regular grout? And, um, you know, can it be used around ocean environments? You know, certainly, you know, with all the salt in the air, lots of moisture all the time, any, any recommendations there? Yeah, another great question. Um, I'm a fan of epoxy. I've done lots of epoxy work myself. Um, for me, epoxy is brilliant because it really is the very best grout performance product in, in our business that reduces, you know, from a homeowner's perspective, like I've got all my showers are all done with epoxy and I do as a homeowner, I do almost no maintenance to my shower other than the odd, you know, run a, run a bristle brush through the grout joints. It, for me, it's, it's worth every penny and when you get into environments like, um, you know, whether you're talking about applications in ocean side situations where you get sea salt, either spray or people tracking it, um, or you're in northern climates and you've got de-icing salt being used, um, that's super aggressive. And those environments, what happens, it, it gets into the Portland cement and Portland cement is a natural um, mineral-based product. And then with, with water and salt and air, it gets corrosive and it deteriorates the, uh, the Portland cement over time. So that's where an epoxy material um, performs heads and shoulders. Like TR400 will perform in those environments, not a problem, but you could get cement-based grout erosion in those type of conditions. So um, great question. I would say for, you know, for normal rain conditions um, and, and most areas, a cement based, a high performance cement based grout like our, our uh, extra color is, is fine. It'll work in those environments. You could use a high performance uh, solvent based non flammable solvent sealer on it um, that will give it more longevity. Um, cut the porosity, also make your maintenance factor for the homeowner. I mean, that's really what one of the things behind these high performance sealers, they improve maintenance regimes. Um, mm -hmm. But it's com compared to a, an epoxy, it's uh, at next level. So cool. um, and whether it be another competitor's epoxy, but we'll, like I said, we'll have a really nice epoxy system for everybody. Um, we're working on it now and hopes to have it um by uh by january um that's going to be easy cleaning it's going to be exterior rated so it's going to have some uv stabilizers in it um but seriously it'll be you can you won't need doodle bug pads you'll be able to just use the standard hydro sponge to clean it so it's cleaning properties are amazing that's great that's great um and then one other question here is how long do we need to keep water and rain off the finished system um, after we're done installing everything? Great question. Um, for me, um, I would say it's really predicated around the grout because TR400 cures out nicely. And if you get gaps, depending on your scheduling, and, and, and I know like the real world is uh, like stuff happens. Okay, you put a tarp up and then the tarp collapses or the wind blows it and the rain comes flying in and it gets into your, your TR400 that you just set uh, during the daytime. This is where TR400 shines. And because it's a rain, uh, resin based material, it's not gonna deteriorate if it, you get some, you know, rain blow back into it prematurely, you know, even a few hours after it. So Good. unless I'm really not worried about TR400, what I'd be more worried about is a cement-based grout 
um, depending whether it's ours or a rapid set, you could have some differences. I would say um, for most conditions, anywhere from um, from three to seven days, depending if you've got a rapid set grout, most most of the rapid set grout manufacturers will recommend you know, to try and protect the grout from exposure to water and elements for at least three days. Um, but for, I would say, a Portland cement-based material, you'll probably get 80 whatever percent curing rate within seven days. So okay. I would say be very, yeah, be the first seven days are the most uh, concerned. With epoxy, it's, um, you got to be more worried with epoxy about getting contamination into the epoxy in the first seven days like if you get construction dust and you've got other trades you're working around and some guy walks out with steel toe boots on it the next day and he's got a ladder and drops a bunch of gunk into the epoxy that's that's a concern so you got to protect epoxy within the first seven days okay yeah good um if we have to um if we have to basically you know let's say we got to go back and we got to do some repairs and i know this is essentially a floating system um how how are repairs done how easy are repairs done with, yeah. with this system and great question in fact we with that ontario job we actually had that because there's a, a tile that got damaged and so what they had to do is they had to do an extraction and the way they did it was to reverse, um, was to cut out the tile. And of course, like TR-400 just bonds like crazy. So you're actually, so you have to take a razor knife and you have to cut the TR-400 out uh, and, the, and the 185 membrane with it. But then what you do is you reach under and you, you place the BST-150 on the underside of it. And then you do kind of a reverse Band-Aid effect with, with the BST-150 and bond it to the undersides and overlap it to the undersides of the existing tile that's good um, and the membrane that's good. And then you place a new membrane and then you place in um, more TR-400 and that seals up the, the surface gaps. Cool. Okay. Yeah. It's that's doable. Good. That's yeah. good. Um, last question. It's really a, a question statement. And I can go ahead and answer here. So uh, to answer the question, uh, there's a question. If we miss something, are we going to email email out this presentation? Uh, this webinar is being recorded and we are going to be placing this on our website. It's actually going to be placed right in the same location where you guys registered for this event. So the uh, anybody that may have missed it or you want to pass this along to your team, certainly can uh, can do that. The recording should be up by tomorrow and uh, you can find that on our on our Utsin website for that. But uh, with that, Dave, I'm going to open up the microphones here and we're going to uh, basically if there's any more questions, um, you know, we can we can go from there and um, anybody has any questions, we can we can go from there. So. No questions? All right. Okay, well if that's uh, if that's it and or if something comes up after the fact, you can also you can always uh, get in touch with one of our team members or send an email to uh, to corporate. But thanks so much everybody for your time and attention on this. And if we can help uh, make your installations easier, don't hesitate to reach out to us. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks again, everybody, for joining. Uh, again, webinar will be available as a recording up on our website. Uh, stay tuned. Check out our, our website as well for more productivity series on how we can increase productivity on your job site. And uh, and look for uh, many more new exciting products to come from Utsin. Hope everybody's doing well. Dave, thanks again for, for a wonderful presentation. And uh, be safe, everyone, and we'll talk to you soon.